when we talk about the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, I don't know if people know the genesis of the right to bear arms. Uh, uh, the Second Amendment comes from the right to protect, for settlers to protect themselves from slave revolts and from uh, uprising by Native Americans. That Second Amendment was provided, uh, ironically, and a lot of people don't understand this, but it was to protect, uh, protect against abuse of government because they, they needed guns to protect against the abuse of the king. Uh, so uh, they, see, they saw the first, Second Amendment as very, very important. To talk about it so much, but on this particular day, on Martin Luther King Day, I think I, this needs to be said. That, that imaginary person that's going to break into your home and kill you, who does that person look like? You know, it's not freckled face Jimmy down the street, is it really? I mean, that's not what really, that's not what really people, we never really want to talk about the racial or the class part of this. The founding fathers clearly stated, if you read the Federalist Papers, if anybody would just take the time to type Federalist Papers into a search engine or go to the library, that guns are here to defend us from the overwhelming force of government. I would just think that the founding fathers could have foreseen automatic weapons coming down the pike. I doubt it. I don't think they were thinking about that when they wrote the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is there, so and it was put in there not for hunting and fishing like they like to say, because back when they did it, if you didn't hunt or fish, you didn't eat. It was put in there so the citizens would have the ability, if their government became oppressive, they could defend themselves against oppressive government. comma between well-regulated militia for the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, because there's some comma, there's there's some difference there. We'll go to the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, comma. And then comes, and the freedom of the press and assembly and free speech, petition the government. So does all that not count either? rid of the Second Amendment, right to bear arms. I just think in the grand scheme of the rights that we have, right of assembly, free speech, I mean, owning a gun does not, it does not tally on the same level as, as those other constitutional rights were given. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. The Second Amendment allowed muskets, not semi-automatic assault rifles, nor pistols with large clips. Uh, update this antiquated amendment ASAP. Our Bill of Rights you don't, does not say Bill don't of need Means. One. Don't, you it need says one. Bill of Here's, Rights. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I've always believed that I don't need a document to tell me what my rights are, but it's very clear of the intentions of our Constitution and Bill of Rights, and that I fully support. The Bill of Rights was written to protect our rights. The Second Amendment is very clear, people. It's explained in the writings of the people who wrote it its purpose. The First Amendment is about freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government of grievances. The very next one on that list is the freedom to bear arms. 
it seems to me it's very important as it's number two on the list and its purpose is to protect the rest of them. They have already infringed on them all and continue to. If the Second Amendment was to protect the others from infringement by the government and they slowly chip away at that one also, we will be at their mercy. How can we, the people, defend those rights without it? What rights will we have left? The bondage of social order, rigid law, the freedom to be comfortable through obedience and complacency? Is that the freedom you really want? Yeah.